So this is an overview of my information consumption system version 2.0, where I'm gonna take the information that I consume all the way through to where I will add it to my obsidian graph to make a permanent or evergreen note. So this is a good complement to the series that I'm creating on building my digital mind in obsidian. But really this is gonna focus on how I use Rome Research to take information through this entire process so that I have the raw material to actually build an evergreen note in Obsidian. And it's really focused here in on the output of the system, making that output as easy to use as possible instead of optimizing for the input of being able to overload the system with a bunch of stuff to consume. And so in this video, I'm gonna give a brief overview of how information flows through this system but I'm going to do more videos in the future where I talk specifically about how I handle each different type of input into the system, whether it be a book or an article or a tweet or a video. So stay tuned for those videos. So first, let's talk a little bit about the first stage, which is the menu. So if I go to my Roam graph, you can see I have my page set up for my kitchen of knowledge which has all the queries for the entire process uh, and if we ignore tweets because those I'll, I'll cover in a different video but they're handled a little bit differently but my menu has a list of stuff that I might want to consume in the future and the way that this one is set up is it's my cue for consuming so that I don't feel like I need to consume everything in the moment I can create a parking lot for the content for later. So I can be more deliberate in the time that I actually spend. I can batch it together and do consuming all at once rather than just consuming here and there throughout the day, getting pulled into what I find is new or interesting or go down a rabbit hole. So, and I really got this idea from Ed Chapman's uh, video. I'll put a link up on a card here on screen, but really it was a uh, really good idea that I thought of having a parking lot for what it is that you want to consume. And so the query is set up to look for anything with the menu tag, but doesn't have the to-do or the done tag. And then I also remove the smart block tag as well because I'm using smart block workflows. I just don't want those to show up in the, in the query. And then once I'm moving something to the next stage, I'm going to mark that item with a to-do. So let's take a look at what that actually uh, looks like because that's a lot of information. So if I go to an article that I might want to consume, I have uh, a lot of information, metadata, and it kind of set up in this structure. But the key for how it's going to flow through is this first block here where I have the menu tag as well as the page name. And having that page name here means that when I'm in my query, I have a clickable link to go to that page right away. And so this section really doesn't do a whole lot. It's just kind of a holding pen for those different pieces of information. So if we look at what the next stage is, which is ordering up what it is that I wanna consume in the next little while, I can very deliberately then go into my Rome graph and I can go to this ordered section for what it is that I want to consume right now. And the way that I have this set up is it's looking for the to-do tag with the menu icon. So when I wanna move something from the menu into order, all I have to do is come down to uh, my menu list. I will then add the to-do tag and then it will automatically show up here in my ordered section. So now I have a list of what it is that I want to consume, which goes to the next stage of the process, which is taking raw notes or literature notes, the notes that you take while you're actually consuming the information. And that means that when I go into one of these, once I'm done, I'm gonna mark the menu item as done, and I'm gonna add a to-do tag to the raw no. So if I take a look at one of these items here, the, I have a section down below where I have the raw notes, again with the page 
title. And then this is where I would take my literature notes as I was watching this video. And then when I was done, I would come up and mark the menu item as done. And then I would go to this raw notes and then I would add it to do tag here. And that means that I have a bunch of notes that are ready to be processed further down the line. The next phase of the system is the cooking one. So this is where things are kind of percolating in the background. I like to have a little bit of a time delay from when I watched and took note on something to when I'm going to go back and review and make them into what is called uh, prepared notes, which is really just an intermediate step between the literature notes that I've taken and the permanent notes that I'm going to add into Obsidian. So the way that looks in my graph here for the cooking section is it's the section where I'm going to create those prepared notes from the raw notes. So the query is set up to look for anything with the to do tag and raw and again removing out those smart blocks. And then once it's done, I'm going to mark the raw notes as done and I'm going to end up with a whole list of prepared notes that are to do. Now, this prepared note step is, I think, more unique to my workflow. And so what does that really mean is that when I have a list of raw notes here for a piece of content, I have a prepared note section where I'm going to go through those raw notes again, and I'm going to try and extract the individual thoughts or ideas that are interesting to me that I want to create permanent, permanent notes for. And so I have a smart block set up to run where I create a to-do tag as well as the prepared tag. And then this is where I will write a descriptive title that might be the title that I'm going to use for the evergreen note within my uh, personal knowledge management system. And then what I'll do is I'll go through the raw notes and I will move the blocks that are supporting this idea up in underneath that prepared note tag. And so I'll just go through the entire list doing this and what I'll end up with is a whole bunch of prepared notes with the supporting literature notes that I've written in my own words to go along with that. And then once I've done the whole system, gone through all the raw notes, so I may or may not transfer all of them into a prepared note. But once I've, I've gone through, I will then mark this as done to indicate that it, uh, to get it out of the query within that kitchen of knowledge. That leads into my digesting section where I will then transfer the notes over into Obsidian. So if I look at how I have this set up in, um, in Rome, my digesting section is really the prepared notes that I just am waiting to transfer to Obsidian. And then really having this section here is just so that I don't have to be switching back and forth between Rome and Obsidian as I am going through my raw notes and teasing out those ideas. So I have this here so that I can just focus on one stage of the process where I'm moving them from one app to another. And so this is set up to query looking for the to do and the prepared. Uh, again, removing out that smart block tag. And then once I'm done transferring it over, I will mark it as uh, done. So here is just where I will come in, look at these notes. I don't even have to go into the pages here anymore. I can just expand the block, copy the text uh, over, go to my Obsidian graph, make my uh, note title. Then I can put in my uh, text and then this is where I can massage the language. I can clean it up a bit, especially if I have a bunch of literature notes that were written at kind of different stages while I was consuming. I can make it into a more ref refined uh, evergreen note for within my system. So that is my information consumption 
system. Thanks everyone for watching this overview. Like I said, I'm going to go into more detail into each type of input and how I process those, as well as go a little bit more into the smart blocks that I have built to support each of those different types. If you haven't checked out my series on building a digital mind, I would encourage you to go check that out because really this information consumption system is all about how I can get the raw notes into Obsidian to be able to craft it into evergreen notes. And one last thing I'll say, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, The Weekly Pearl, where I talk about the things that I've been pondering, enjoying, actioning, what has been resonating with me, and the things that I've been learning throughout the week, go to my website, jeffreyweber.com, and sign up. Also, if you have any tips or tricks on how you have designed your information consumption systems, I would love to hear about them down in the comments below. Thanks, and I will see you all next time.